Hey guys, today's video is going to be on replacing the solenoid on this mower. I just did two videos on this, this twin cylinder brake, the post twin. Uh, the first video was putting a new starter on it, and the second was putting a coil on it. So if you ain't watched them, you can check them out. And uh, I replaced the solenoid on it more as maintenance than anything because it's, uh, if I remember right, it was corroded and everything. And the mower sat outside a long time before I got it. So just preventive maintenance more or less and uh, making a video on it because I had a few questions on how to replace solenoids so I figured why not make a video on it and uh, the main thing is finding your solenoid on this one it's easy to get to but uh, first of all find your battery where your cable hooks in and just follow the cable back it'll lead you straight to the solenoid where it's at most of the time unless there's something different set up on a newer mower but uh, that's generally the way to find it if you don't know where it's at or you can refer to your manual it should say something about it but uh, on this one you gotta remove the shifter cover over here and uh, I'm gonna do this off camera you just got four uh, screws and you take the knob off let me get the screws out and we'll look at it and a lot of your newer mirrors that the batteries underneath the seat uh, like Troy belt and bones and stuff like that uh, you got to take the battery out and it should be mounted on the side somewhere around the battery around the opening uh, Like I said just follow the wire it'll lead you straight to it Sometimes on certain ones they're hard to get to and uh, this one happened to be an easy one Which is good for the video too so you'll be able to see all the wires and everything better But it pretty much replaces the same on any of them Some of them might have an extra wire which is usually a ground this one grounds by the frame. If I remember right, this just has one bolt holding it on, so I need to try to fix that if I can too. Yeah, it just has one bolt hole. Uh, you see, it's been there since the mirror was repainted. I'm gonna keep that solenoid. I keep everything that's still working. Because if you get a mirror that needs something that uh, needs a solenoid, the old one's better than nothing as long as it still works. So that's what I base that off of. But, uh, the wiring is pretty simple on the uh, You got your hot wire coming in from the bag. Like I said, you just follow your hot wire. This is it right here. This is your hot wire coming in on this side. And this wire here is what goes through your safety switches and your ignition switch to turn the cool on. And uh, this is for the lights here. It's got lights in the back. <laughs> this wire right here is your trigger wire for the solenoid. Maybe when you turn the key to start, power comes in here and turns the coil on on it. And this either has a connector like this that slides on or a connector that slides over the bolt or like a ring terminal on it like this. So just pay attention to how your wires are. We'll take these two bolts loose here, these two nuts here. And we'll take the wires loose. And uh, I would suggest uh, unhooking your uh, positive or negative terminal from your battery because uh, if you have a battery hooked up and you cross these it'll start cranking. Or if you go like this to the frame, it'll short out and shoot sparks all over. So you don't want either one of them to happen while you're working. So just connect your battery to prevent that from happening. These are 7 16 nuts on this. I usually have a lock washer, yeah. And if you drop a nut or washer there, it usually lands on the deck. And sometimes it can be real hard to find. That terminal has been replaced before or made out of pipe. Look like it's been made out of pipe. If you can do that, no problem at all. Yeah, this sort of solenoid ain't as bad as I thought it was. We're pretty much just replacement for video purposes, pretty much. Like I said, I'll put this with my used parts and if I get a motor that needs a starter, I don't have a new one, we can use it. So that pretty much. I just work on my own equipment anyway. All the stuff you see in my videos, either mine or friends of mine. So, okay, so that's all your wiring then. Like I said, you're supposed to have two bolts holding that on. And these types get your uh, ground through the bolts that goes into the frame to get your ground. And uh, symptoms of a bad solenoid is uh, turn the key and nothing at all. And that could either be the solenoid or your switch. You just have to check on the, your trigger wire here to make sure you're getting juice. If you're getting juice on this when you have the key on short, and your solenoid's bad. Or you got a bad ground. A lot of possibilities on these. Or 
you turn the key and the solenoid just clicks and sometimes the starter engages and sometimes it don't or it don't engage at all then your contacts will burn out because you can have a good coil which will still click but the contacts will be burned out so you can go either way uh, you just have to do a little bit of troubleshooting on it if you get a solenoid that's just clicking and uh, the starter ain't doing nothing then you can just take a screwdriver here and jump it like this and your starter should engage if it does and you get a bad solenoid if it don't and you get a bad starter or a loose wire somewhere just watch for sparks when you do that make sure your blades are off because the motor will turn no matter what when you do that if your battery's hooked up then you remove your two bolts here in this case one and this was your solenoid like I said this one don't look too old really but uh, I may not even replace it. It looks like it's been replaced. It looks like a pretty new one, actually. So we'll just, I think I'm just going to clean it up and put it back in there because it was still working. So why replace it if it's still working, you know? But anyway, this is like a switch, more or less. Works, this works the same as a relay. The power comes in on one, and your starter hooks to the other. And then uh, when, you, when your ignition switch tells the, sends power to this to tell the solenoid to kick on, the coil energizes and uh, makes makes these two contact inside of the contact in there this can also also be referred to as a contactor or a relay or a solenoid that's kind of a universal term but contactor is more of a heavy duty and solenoids for a starter and, and a relay would be a lot smaller than this it would be uh, like on a vehicle your light switch turns on a relay that turns on your lights more or less okay guys I found out why this was mounted like it was because uh, See, it was like this. And the reason if you mount it like this, it sticks up and the cover won't go in there right. So, you need this type that will uh, mount like this and bend them other tabs down and it'll be out of the way. I'm going to put the new one on there after all. But there's nothing wrong with this one, so I'm going to put this in my stock. And that way, if I need it, I got it. This is a little heavier duty one, anyways. You see, it's got thicker nuts on it. So, uh, I get these cheap offline either through Tulsa Warehouse, Engine Warehouse, Tulsa Engine Warehouse, or uh, right off eBay. You get a lot of good buys all flying like that. I think a new one's like 6 or $7 or something like that. It varies some. But, uh... Okay, so I bent them tabs out, out of the way, so now I can just mount it straight on like that, no problem. So we'll go ahead and wire it up here before I bolt it so you better see what's going on here. Up and a washer on there. Uh, we'll just leave the washer on. Now the washer's supposed to be on last. This is a little different than the ones I've been using. Okay, so. battery and your, your wire going to your switches hook in one side it don't really matter which side hooks what the, all it is is a switch you just got to make sure you get the right wires with the other wire this will go on here also make sure your terminals are clean these aren't these aren't too bad and you don't like that and this. some of them just have a simple lock washer this one's different for some reason. Probably, yeah, I thought that was half inch. And these don't go tight. And these don't go very tight at all. It actually has a torque spec on the side of it. And uh, it ain't that critical. You don't have to go by the torque spec, but just don't over tighten them. You'll be fine. Now, I need to turn them around, really. Looking at it backwards there. Let me get these turned around. And be sure that these aren't touching, because if they're touching, your motor's going to sit there and crank and crank and crank when you put the fire back on. And your signal wire here, trigger wire, whatever you want to call it, just plug in here. There are some that uh, just slide over the bolt. 
and you're ready to mount. And that's pretty much it. And uh, you don't want to get them real tight. If for some reason they strip out, you can put a nut on the back side there if you have to. So let's hook it up and make sure everything works. Alright guys, we'll go ahead and start up here and make sure that cylinder is working. That seems like it's working pretty good. So if you got any questions or comments, leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.